Okay, so in this equation, we have r of t is equal to 25 plus 2 plus 25 ti. So this is the horizontal component, and j is the vertical component. And it represents the flight of an arrow fired by an archer in the tree. And so I'm going to rewrite this r of t. I can really write it as like x of t, which is the horizontal component, and y of t, which is the vertical component. And so it's really going to be 2 plus 25t. And the horizontal, or the vertical, is 7 plus 28t minus 9.t squared. Okay, and so we know time is in seconds and distance is in meters. y equals 0 is ground level. And so a part asks, how high in the tree was the archer when the arrow was fired? So when the arrow was fired, we have to stop and think, what does that mean? That means time is zero. Okay, and so if I want how high, that means I'm looking for the y value. So I want to know y at zero. If I plug zero into here, I can clearly see that it is going to be seven meters is the initial height of the archer in the tree. When I go to B part, it says, what was the total time of the flight? Well, one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to show it in my calculator here. If I go to a new mode called parame parametric mode, I can put my components, x and y components, in as I've shown here. And I've typed it in there, and I'm going to graph it. So this shows the path of the arrow the x and the y at various times. And I want to know what was the total flight time. So I want to know when it was shot doo -doo -doo, and it lands on the ground here. Well, how much time happened? Well, that means when my height, my y value equals zero. So my up and down when y is zero is when it's going to hit the ground. That will give me a time and the time, I use that to find out what my x value will produce. And so if y is 0, I get 0 is equal to 7 plus the 28t minus the 9.8t squared. And finding t, if I go to my applications, if I go to poly simultaneous, and I'm going to go to a root finder next, you can see I've typed the values in already. If I hit graph, I end up the time is equal to 5.95 or time is equal to negative 0 0.240, which is impossible because it's negative. So at time t is 5.95, that's when it hits the ground. That's when I get to the ground here. And so now I want to know that's the total time in flight is b part. c part now says what is the horizontal distance? So what's the horizontal going to be when my time was 5.95? And so now I'm looking for the x value at 5.95. And if I plug that in, I get 2 plus 25 at 5.95. I could go and just find the value, number 1. And I enter in t's, so I go 5. 0.95 and I get will be 150.75 and so the three significant figures is 151 meters is how far it goes horizontally. This graph gets controlled by t's. Okay so continue along I know here's my questions I just pulled in. Now I want to know what it was the maximum height of the arrow. Well I want to know this top part. And with this top part, to find that vertex, I can't, there is no way to just go calculate vertex. It doesn't work in this parametric mode. What I want to find is I have to think about if I'm going to have the maximum height, that is when this particular function, when it has gone, the top means it has a slope of zero. But what has a slope of zero? Is it the x value or the y values? And in this case, it's going to be the y values because I want to know when the derivative of the y value is equal to zero. 
Because the y value is what's get acted upon by gravity. The x just continues going and going and going. It's going to keep moving. The velocity is going to. But I'm the velocity of the up and down gets affected by gravity. And so I take the derivative and I set it equal to 0. I look at my function, which I have. Here's my function again. I look at my y value. And my y value derivative is simply going to be 28 minus 9.8 t. And I set it equal to 0. And I get negative 9.8 t is equal to negative 28. And so when I do that calculation for t, I get 28 divided 9.8. I get 2.86 seconds. So when t equals 2.86 seconds, the velocity is zero. But I'm not actually looking for the velocity is zero. I'm looking for the maximum height. So then I go into my regular function. I'm going to do the regular function at 2.86, the y value, which is the up and down. I can trace this now and put 2.86 in. And what I'm doing is I'm doing 7 plus 28 times 2.86 and from here minus the 4.9 times 2.86 squared and when I do that I'm going to get 47.0 meters is what I get when I do that okay and so that was D part finding the maximum height of the arrow now I want to find the speed of the arrow at 4 seconds. Well, in order to find the speed, I need to find the velocity, which is equal to the derivative of the position. Well, here was the derivative of the y value already. I've already done that part. This one here is my derivative. So I'm just going to write that down, 28 minus 9.8t. My x value, here's my function again. I'll put it here. Here was my x value. If I take the derivative of my x value, I can see that it is 25. And so I'm looking for the speed of the arrow at 4 seconds. Well, I want to know the velocity then at 4. Well, that's going to be 25. And 28 minus 9.8 times 4 which will be 25, and I've already done this, is a negative 11.2. But I'm going to show you something clever on the calculator. What it will do is if I calculate, I can find the derivative, which is the velocity of these functions. If I plug in number 3, and I want to do it at 4 seconds, I can see that at 4 seconds the velocity is negative 11.2. It's going downwards. It's being pulled down by gravity. Similarly, if I do the x component derivative at 4, I get the 25 that is here. So to find the speed then, I need to find the magnitude of this particular vector, which is going to be 25 squared plus the negative 11.2 squared. And when I do that, I look at my notes, and I can see that it's 27.4 meters per second. And that's the speed that it is traveling at. Now, continuing this problem through, I mean, keep pulling my values down here, and here's my questions. And I'm also going to make sure that I take my velocity as well. Alright, so now it wants to know at what angle did the arrow hit the ground? Well, if you recall, here is my graph, right? And so the thing that is changing, I is coming down here, is the arrow. The x value is always going to be, it's not affected by time at all. But I, it is going to be, the thing that's changeable to dictate it is not position, but it's going to be the velocity. And so I'm looking for the velocity when it hits the ground. 
if I recall, it hits the ground. B part says, what was the total time of the flight? Well, it hit the ground at 5.95 seconds. I'm going to use that value. So I'm going to find the velocity at 5.95 seconds because that's when it hits the ground. When I find that velocity, and I know the x value is 25 because it's constant, my y value, if I go to here, my derivative at 5. 0.95, I get negative 30.31, and that's what this is here. And so if I think about my arrow, here's the ground, I know it's going down here at a rate of minus 30.31, this is 25, and I have a right triangle. And so in order to find this angle, if I ignore the negative sign because I want the distance, it's going to be the tangent of alpha is ignoring the negative, 0.3, because I'm only looking at the distance of 25. And so making sure I'm going to be in degrees, I could do it in radians too, that's fine. Tangent of 30.31 divided by 25, and I get a value of 50.5 degrees is the angle that the arrow hit the ground. And I use the velocity to determine that. And then finally, the last thing says, show that the acceleration is constant. Well, I'm going to use my velocity curve here. And I know the derivative of the velocity is equal to the acceleration. So when I take the derivative of 25, I get 0. When I take the derivative of this y component, I get negative 9.8. And this is constant. It's not moving. And if you recognize this number here, that is gravity. And that is meters per second squared. So a lot of components to this problem, you have to think about, you think about the x values and the y values. You think about, are you talking about the velocity of the x, or are you talking about the velocity of the y? And time can relate them both together. And you have to think about velocity, position, and acceleration all together.